Hi, my name is Duncan McFarlane. Over the next 20 minutes or so, I'm going to give you an overview of the Digital Manufacturing on a Shoestring program, a program focused on the development of low-cost digital solutions for small and medium-sized manufacturing companies. So in this short presentation, I'm going to provide some of the background to the project, an overview of the key activities of the project to date, and an insight into where we're going into the future in helping small, medium-sized manufacturers with digital solutions. So firstly, why focus on low-cost digital solutions for manufacturing SMEs? Well, the backdrop to this is that over the last 10, maybe slightly less years, there's been a lot of effort globally looking at digitalization of manufacturing uh, businesses and their operations. And across the globe, there have been a huge number of different initiatives and just some of those you see listed here, just to exa examples of those. So there have been big global initiatives heavily focused on the digitalization of manufacturing and they've taken a, a very strategic view on digital and how it can affect manufacturing. And in fact, many have actually introduced what they see as a new paradigm, although digital systems have been in manufacturing for many years. They've been technology-driven, pushing new technologies uh, such as AI, machine learning, uh, digital twins, etc. And some, but not all, have noted the existence of legacy systems and, and the challenges in meeting those. They've, well, along with the proposals these new for these new paradigms, is quite a high perceived cost of the new infrastructure that will be required to put them in place. And actually, the, along with that, the complexity of a bis, building a business case. And it, for a small company, a small, medium-sized enterprise manufacturer or SME, that's particularly challenging. And a recent uh, st studies of small SMEs and, and the digitalization challenges have identified a couple of problems around the areas of digital skills and the prohibitive cost of investment. And so, you know, for many small companies, digitalization is actually inaccessible because of this expense and complexity. And that's where we've focused our, our developments. Actually, what we found is there is a significant enthusiasm in small companies for digitalization, albeit with a limited time and money availability, uh, and many wanting to actually try things out in a small way first, a toe in the water approach. Also, interestingly, many small companies have very similar digital needs, and that's something that we've tried to exploit in our program. And the other overriding message from small companies is, we don't really want new technologies, we just want digital solutions to some of the problems we have in our business. So that provides a kind of the backdrop to the shoestring program which is, as it says, a low-cost digital manufacturing approach. So the key thrust has been threefold. Firstly, following on from those comments we picked up from small companies, is very much a needs-driven uh, approach. So focusing on the business and operational needs of the small company. Secondly, one-by-one -one solution development. That doesn't mean isolated solutions, but it means every piece of development, step-by-step, -step, is actually designed to provide an initial a benefit to the company rather than having to wait for infrastructure to be installed in order to do that. And that when we talk about cost, we mean the total cost of deployment. So the components, the software, the development, and the installation and deployment within the organisation. So that's the sort of the backdrop to the digital manufacturing and the shoestring program. The final bit to mention is this shoestring bit. It came from the shoestring travel guides that were available, uh, for example, when I was a student in the 80s to help travel on a, on a very restricted budget. So that's why, why we, folk, we use the shoestring label. The sort of solutions you see around the outside here, each of these is very simple, uh, low-cost solutions that we've built for SMEs with the idea that it can just improve the efficiency or effectiveness of their, their operations. In the last five plus years, there've become lo a lot of different digital technologies available, not necessarily in the uh, industrial domain, but at a very low cost. Uh, and you can see low cost microcomputers, low cost uh, Wi-Fi cameras, uh, cloud-based software, et cetera. 
And we've been seeking to find a way to embed these types of technologies into industrial digital solutions in order to be able to keep that cost down, whether it be on the shop floor, in the back office, or in the interface the company has with its suppliers. So I'm just going to show a quick uh, video of one of the early demonstrators we developed on the program to give people an idea of the type of low-cost solutions we envisage being able to develop for small companies. This one is around uh, inventory tracking. So this demo shows how we can use off-the-shelf low-cost technologies and put them together to form a useful solution for an SME. So this in particular is about part identification and tracking. And the basic idea is that when parts are received from suppliers, we simply attach a QR code to each part, we put all the parts inside a box, and we scan the entire box under this low-cost vision system, which is comprised of a low-cost uh, uh, Raspberry Pi and a low-cost camera attached to it. The system will then identify all of the parts inside the box, scan all of the QR codes simultaneously, and store some information about each of the parts, which can be searched later. For example, we can browse the contents of the tray if we know the tray ID. If an individual part is scanned under the vision system. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to pause that at that point. Just, it just gives you an idea of the type of low cost capabilities we've been trying to develop. That was very early on in the program. The partners involved in Shoestring are, are, are quite numerous and actually we've seen a, a quite a big increase in the last year of our partnership base, but they're broken up into uh, companies, end users on the right-hand side that are actually involved in our solutions in pilot studies, uh, solution providers on the left that are helping us to develop parts in the solution base of Shoestring, and then importantly, associations, both industry and regional, that are helping us to access larger numbers of uh, small and medium-sized manufacturers, larger than just within our partner base. And so that, that's, that's been really useful. And perhaps just to give you a sense of why uh, small companies have, get, have got involved in the program, I'll just play another short video. Uh, this is a colleague, Carl Dean from local company PCML. Yeah, so within our business, it's really important to look at uh, manufacturing digitalization because um, there's only so far you can go in reducing machining times and process times. Uh, and it's a lot of these periphery events before and after where we can show some greater gains and, and maintain a leading edge on cost effectiveness within businesses. Within the digitalization process, um, we've already introduced quite a few technologies and one of, the, one of the leading things we would like at the moment is uh, with four or five hundred jobs going through a factory in the week across multiple processes, knowing exactly where each job is at any one time, uh, particularly if it's moving from one operation to the other. So if it's just finished one and about to start the other, is it still where it finished or is it about where it's, where it's just about to start? Uh, and a heat map showing where these parts are would be invaluable in saving a lot of time. So I won't keep going with that, but what you can hear from Carl there is, is the, the needs uh, are very are simple in some cases and peripheral to their core production. What we've done as part of this program has been to run a whole series of requirements workshops where we've talked with a large number of small manufacturers. Uh, in fact, over 300 companies have participated in, in our workshops. And the aim of these workshops has been to establish what types of digital solution areas are most important to small companies as they seek to add more digital capabilities into their operations. So we've run uh, 15 to 20 of these workshops. We actually continue to run them. What we've managed to obtain from these activities is what we call a, a digital solution catalog, which has just been released in the last month, which is a, a listing of 59 digital solution areas that occur in these workshops and in our discussions with small companies. From that catalog, we, we, we find we've got solution areas right across the business and are actually different types of solutions ranging from sensing and data analysis to decision support. From that 59, 
it's even clearer that there's a group of priority solution areas and you see the top 15 illustrated there and in fact the real-time tracking of internal jobs that Carl was talking about uh, very, a, a year or so ago in that video has actually been identified as the most common digital need for most of the small medium-sized uh, manufacturers we've talked with. So armed with this idea that actually there are lots of common solutions needed, albeit with some need for customization, that's given us uh, some background and support for, for the solution development process we've developed. And the vision for that has been that we take out the off-the-shelf technologies where possible, very low-cost technologies, and embed them into a standardised building block framework. And the idea behind that is that we ought to be able to interchange technologies relatively easily. And we found also that these building blocks of technologies combine very frequently into the, in the same structures. And those common combinations we, we now refer to as service modules and we're using these service modules generally to produce the solutions we need, whether it's part tracking, digital job cards, or equipment monitoring. So we've got a very standardized modular way of building these low cost solutions. And it means we can adapt them very easily and build new solutions using the base of previous solutions very simply as well. So the development process we've put together is a multi-step design process you see there. A lot of focus in the last year has been on the first two steps. We're now focusing quite heavily on procurement and the training, development, operation and maintenance work is coming uh, in the next six months. We actually have three different entry points for people interested in developing these solutions because the aim is not that we produce the solutions, but that an, an end user or a third party assisting uh, developer will work with the end user to develop their own solutions, whether they do it from a ready-made solution that we might provide as an exemplar, or whether they go back to the basics and build the solutions from building blocks. Equally, what we've been doing is providing support for technology and solution developers for them to find the best pathway for pieces of technology or partial or full solutions to be introduced into the shoestring suite of uh, digital solution areas. To make that design process more palatable for the end user, there's a lot of work occurring right now to build what we call a, an automated solution configurator, which will automate or at least semi-automate the solution development process. And in the long term, the idea is that a user would be able to go to the automated solution configurator with a set of needs and more or less automatically generate a solution specification, a template for a solution, and a shopping list for components. I'll show you a video in a few moments that will illustrate that in more detail. So these solutions we've been developing, we initially built a lot of laboratory demonstrators, both in Cambridge and Nottingham, the two universities uh, running the program. But now we're actually further into a pilot phase where we have now have, currently have nine pilot solutions being trialled in small companies across the UK. We also have a number of other pilots we're developing and that will, will start to uh, appear soon as well. So lots of exemplars of these solutions being put into use. And just to give you a specific example, this is a solution that is rather interesting because it's something that applies to many small companies that have old analog display panels that they need to inspect on a regular basis. And because of the vagaries of the electrical circuitry behind, it's very difficult to network and gather digital signals from them. So the approach we've taken is to point a camera at a display panel and do image processing on the camera image to generate a live digital feed from that uh, display panel, whether it's buttons, lights, dials, switches. So I'm going to show you a short video which illustrates that. In this video, we're going to be showing how the shoestring approach can be used to digitise data from a legacy panel in the factory of one of our shoestring partners. Having gone through the shoestring workshop, we've identified that the digitalization of the panel data is a priority for the company and are now going to specify a solution in the solution configurator. We could create a solution from scratch, starting either from the service module or building bolt level, but here we're going to select a predefined solution from the process monitoring category. We're going to extract from the panel the position data from a switch, 
the temperature reading and the on-off status of a red light. Our pre-configured solution for legacy panel data collection contains building blocks for computing, sensing, a driver and a service wrapper which allows this service module to communicate with other services. We select options most appropriate to our situation. In this case, choosing a Raspberry Pi computer, camera and Python to undertake image processing. We can specify the position of each of the components we need to extract data from within the interface. Here's what our setup looks like with the camera in place. We also specify a service module for our user interface, this time using a Surface Pro tablet as well as the Grafana software. We can set up what kind of data visualization we want to see. In this case, we choose red light status, dial position status, the current temperature, and a plot of temperature over time. Our visualization in Grafana will look something like this. Having finalized our solution, the Solution Configurator now provides us with the code we need to run the process as well as a shopping list of the components we need. And the project is complete. So it just gives you an idea of a very simple solution and the way that automated configurator is being developed and it's currently in prototype stage at the moment. So just to finish up, just a couple of comments on where we're going with uh, shoestring in the future. Firstly, there are a, a number of outputs that are going to be emerging from the REPSLC funded research project that concludes uh, in early 2022. The digital catalogue I mentioned earlier, along with a set of what we call starter solutions that allow people to actually download a, a solution and get be begin straight away or customise it. Secondly, second output is the solution, the design approach that I talked about, the five-step design approach. Thirdly, we've developed a number of workshop tools for capturing requirements and building solution specifications. Fourthly, there will be case studies written about the demonstrators and pilots, along with videos to support them. And fifth, the automated configurator its system itself. So they form the core uh, handover elements, if you like, from the research program. And where we're going with that into the future is really the development of what we call a shoestring community. Uh, and that's a community in two parts. The first part will be what we call a core support unit for shoestring, which will essentially manage both the transition of the results from the research program into practice, and secondly, be the industrial interface and regional interface for shoestring capabilities and will support a portal, a software online portal that will manage not just the solution configurator, but also the pre-configured solutions I mentioned, uh, the workshop requirements, workshops, guides and training materials currently under development at the moment, et cetera. The second part is that a regional adoption program is, is being set up at the moment and we're confident that we'll be begin to develop regional programs in, in different parts of the UK in the next months, in, certainly within the next six months. And we, the regions are actually an excellent way of doing this development because it really needs local champions to support the, the evolution and the rollout of the shoestring capabilities. So that concludes uh, this very brief overview of digital manufacturing on a shoestring. I hope you've enjoyed listening. Uh, feel free to contact us through digitalshoestring.net uh, and look forward to having you all on board the shoestring program in the future.